sold 10,000 copies on his own. And the agent found him, and uh, Scholastic made a six-figure preemptive offer. What's the point here? They didn't just buy this book. They bought Patrick Carmen because he was out there doing something. This is Ron Pramschafer, and welcome to Publish Basics Radio, where weekly we try to help you navigate the self-publishing minefield. Dan, before we get into our main topic, I read a statement that, though, you may, I think, I think I saw it on the website, that thousands of people have written children's picture books that will never be published. Nothing's wrong with the books. Many are very good, but the barriers are too high. Just what are these barriers that these authors face? Well, the cost of printing, we're talking somewhere between ten and $30,000 for the printing, depending on quantity. And, of course, printing is a quantity game. Then there's the time to print because it takes uh, several weeks, well, months to uh, print because most of the color work is done offshore. And then you've got a large inventory that you have to maintain and, and ship from. And, of course, once you put ink on paper, it's very, very permanent. It can't be changed. So those are the major challenges. Okay. Now, what's the difference, say, between the challenge faced by a children's book author and one faced by an author of a regular trade book? Well, you know, a regular trade book, the markup is often better, and the cost to produce is often lower. The last time I checked the figures, the uh, average children's picture book was going for $14.51, $5 more if you put a jacket on it. Well, that's $19.50, which is pretty expensive. And a soft cover book, if you can believe this, was going for $7.34 on the average, which means you've got to print one heck of a large quantity to get your price down. Remember that your printing cost has to be marked up a minimum of eight times. So you're going to have to print an awful lot of books to get your price down to where you can afford to sell a soft cover book for seven dollars thirty four cents. Yeah, it's funny. I tell people I, I talk to them all the time. I print millions of all soft cover children's books, but I print them for larger publishers. And they ask, well, well you know, well, you know, how can they do it? I say, well, just print a hundred thousand copies. I say, you know, a thirty two page children's book soft cover for a hundred thousand copies is like thirty cents, that's and that's why they can do two ninety five, four ninety five, seven thirty four. That's right. You know, I mean, here you come in with your what you think is, you know, a high order of a thousand, and you're paying almost as much unit cost as what these other places are retailing them for. Right. And right now, your li- your listeners are thinking, "That's great. Well, I'll just get a publisher, and they can print a hundred thousand." The reality is, the big publishers are only taking on celebrity. They're only taking on people that have a following because they know that those people are branded and they're going to sell a certain number of books. That's why they're doing. Great literature like Madonna's children's book and the book that was written by Paris Hilton's dog. Man, <laughs> so uh, now if you had to pull a number out of the year, how, how how big is this children's book market? Near as we can tell, it's about two billion dollars a year, and the children's picture books are about half a billion a year. Wow, so it's huge, very very large. But it's very hard to get in, or it's it's, a, it's serious. I mean. You, you can uh, say you like you say you can get into the black and white market for you know a thousand bucks and you're in. This is more serious money. Much more serious, and you also have to realize that it's not just a question of coming up with the money and producing the book. Then you've got to get out and promote the book. You've got to sell the book, and you know, quite frankly, children's book authors, like some other authors, will produce the book and then get distracted and go off to something else, maybe another children's book. And they just don't let people know that the book is available. Have you noticed any kind of common traits between children's book and children's book authors who succeed? Yes. And I will tell you one or two stories. The first one I read in Publishers Weekly about six months ago by uh, about a gentleman by the name of Patrick Carmen. He had a uh, children's book trilogy, The Land of Elyon. He was going out doing readings in schools, and he was stressing literacy. He sold... 10,000 copies on his own. A rep from Scholastic heard about him and contacted a literary agent and said, go find this guy, we want him. And the agent found him, and uh, Scholastic made a six-figure preemptive offer, and currently he's out on tour with his two daughters. What's the point here? They didn't just buy this book. They bought Patrick Carmen because he was out there doing something. Okay, so given what you know about the market, what would be the best advice you could give anyone who's considering writing a children's book? Well, you have to get out there and promote the book. And the challenge is that most writers are introverts. And a lot of us introverts, we like to stay home and write. We don't really like going out and doing autograph parties or radio and TV interviews. We want to just be uninterrupted, stay home and write. And so it's uh, it's a challenge. And we have to recognize that 
getting out and promoting our books is not only good for the book, but it's good personal self-development. It's good for us as well. Mm -hmm. So you just have to get out there and let people know the book exists. Now, there are ways that you can promote the book without going out of the house. You can send out review copies. You can send out articles and news releases. You can send out uh, email announcements to all your friends and ask them to pass them on. Those are inexpensive things that you can do to promote your book without going out of the house. All right. Now, you seem to have a, a whole new approach to children's books, and this one sounds like a winner. Now, you, you, don't, know, you don't know me from The Man in the Moon. I call you, Dan. I, I say, I really want to do a children's book, but I really don't have any money. What do I do? Well, yeah, of course, I do know you. You're a printer. So, uh, <laughs> so now we're going to talk about not printing your book. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you knew that when, when you asked me to do this show, because you knew that this is a great way to help people, and it's a great entry, uh, and it's going to bring in more printing eventually for you. But in my travels, I use PowerPoint in my presentations, and I've gotten to know PowerPoint very well, and I, I understand all the possibilities with PowerPoint. So I thought, why not apply these to children's books? Instead of printing a children's book, why don't you put your children's book on disk? Why don't you do it in PowerPoint? You can replicate those disks and sell the disks for 30 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, that really gets your cost down. Now, once your cost is so low, you can test your children's book out on parents and teachers and kids, get feedback, go back and tweak it. Um, if you want to go out and do seminars, many shows in um, bookstores for kids, you can get feedback, you can project it there, and you can get feedback and go back and tweak it. Uh, I do probably five presentations a week uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Austin tomorrow. And when I come back, I, I constantly tweak my PowerPoint presentation. They just get better and better and better. And it's been going on for years. And you can do that with a PowerPoint ebook. And you can't do that with a P book, a printed book, because you can't take ink off paper, at least not very inexpensively. Yep, that's what, that's my old saying. I can't you know I can't take it off once I put it on. So let's look at some of the costs here. It'll cost oh in low quantities, uh, a printed book is gonna cost you two and a half or three dollars each, even more if you print a very small quantity. Your investment is going to be ten to thirty thousand dollars. It's going to take two months to get it printed. You're going to have at least three thousand in inventory. You can't make changes. But with an ebook, it costs you thirty cents to produce. Your investment is practically nothing. Uh, the time to manufacture is minutes. Your inventory is whatever you want—a couple of discs—and you can make changes anytime you want to. I nope. mean, there's just no comparison. Okay, I just happen to have a daughter who's a second grade teacher who wrote her first children's book who I've been, like, you know, trying my best to help her. And one of the, the largest or one, one of the, the biggest obstacles I've found with the illustrated children's book is the illustrator. How do you handle the, you know, the, the initial illustration work and the editing that goes, you know, in children's book editing seems to be completely different than trade book editing? Well, uh, I've got the answer for that, and you certainly found the challenge. In a children's book, the writer gets half and the illustrator gets half. Now you're getting half what you thought you were getting. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the PowerPoint presentation, you get your photographs or your drawings or your cartoons or whatever from websites like clipart.com. You just subscribe and you type in a name and up pops all these possibilities. You can get animations from animationfactory.com. You can get videos from various websites out there. And it's just a copy-paste, just like you do in Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. Then you can go in and add audios. You know, just for example, let's say you have an elephant. You click on the elephant. There we go. Did you hear that? <laughs> and then we have this annoying pig. <laughs> so. You have things like click on the fire truck. Okay, so you got the interactive part. One of the biggest problems that I see with self-published books is they aren't very professionally done. Okay, the first thing is this entry level, which is great. Okay, you got very, very little money. I mean, even on a black and white book, you can lay it out in Microsoft Word and convert it to PDF and make some, you know, cover that you've put together with clip art and call it a book. But it does it, it, it only looks like a book. I mean, it's still, it's not properly edited. It's not properly designed. It's not properly, you know, maybe it's properly printed. Obviously, you know, the big publishing companies have these interactive CDs, and they have for years, right? They look different from a professional standpoint than what you're probably going to produce yourself. So the first step is just go ahead and do it. You say, get it out there, you know, just like an ice hockey, man. Get the puck down the ice. 
That's right. All okay. reason is it's easier to edit than it is to create. So you've already written your children's book. You've, you've kind of got a good idea what you're doing. Put it into PowerPoint. Then go back and look at it and start cleaning it up and adding to it. And then you can put in uh, your illustrations, your animations, your videos, your audios, your hyperlinks, and so on. Okay. Now, what the well, one thing you say as far as like all oh, clip art, and and I, I get asked this from time to time. Uh, people go out searching on the internet and they see an image and they pull it off and that's it. They use it, and they're probably violating somebody's copyright. Absolutely, that's what I was looking for. But if you go to a site like clipart.com, they've got six million images there. You just type in the word lion and it'll pop. 243 lions, mm -hmm. and you take your choice, and these are copyright free. Now, they do ask that you mention that you got the art from clipart.com, so you should put that on your copyright page, mm -hmm. but it is copyright free. And by the way, that clipart that comes with Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not for commercial use. Oh, I, I didn't use that. that in your office, but it's not for commercial use. You can't resell it, like put it in a book. Oh, I didn't realize that. All right, so, so we all learn something. People don't that. realize that, but it's uh, not copyright free. I'll be. Yeah, and there's different ones. I subscribe to different services, photos.com, and there's a bunch of them out there. How many people do you know that have all done this or been pretty happy with this? Well, I only know a handful, and mm -hmm. they've been extremely happy with it. All right, Dan. Well, it was awful nice having you on here today. It's been an honor and pleasure. See you then. Take Thank care you. now, Dan. For Publishing Basics Radio, this is Ron Pramp Schaefer. See you next week. This program is produced by Jack Street Media as part of the Affiliate Nanocasting Network. Thanks for listening.